Turn with me to Daniel, the sixth chapter. I'm going to read it to you from the New International Version. You may have a slight different variation. It is nonetheless the word of the Lord. Daniel, the sixth chapter. Just follow along. I don't know which verses I'll read. I'm, I'm really follow. I'm on, I'm on God pilot right now uh, because I could read this whole thing to you. Um, but my prayer is that God would give me and equip me with the ones that need to be read. And as we read through here, that you will receive his divine truth. In Daniel 6, chapter verse 1, it says, It pleased Darius. Now, there are some scholarly theologians who pronounce this Darius. Um, but for our colloquial understanding, I'm just going to say Darius. Um, you know, it's especially familiar when you see something written a specific way, but you have a different pronunciation for it. You know, don't, don't act like I'm the only one that knows in African-American tradition. You will spell it one way. But then you come up with a whole different way that it's supposed to be pronounced. I'm the only one? Okay. It's not Stephanie, it's Stephania. Oh, okay. <laughs> so for our purposes today, this is going to be King Darius. It pleased Darius to appoint 120 satraps, which were provincial leaders or governmental officials, to rule throughout the kingdom. And then he had three, Darius King Darius had appointed three administrators who were to oversee the 120 satraps. And one of the three was Daniel. Now the satraps were made accountable to them so that the king might not suffer loss. In other words, he needed the help running the kingdom. And verse 3, now Daniel so distinguished himself among the administrators that the sat and the satraps by his exceptional qualities that the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. In other words, it was a promotion it was an elevation. It was an upgrade. In verse 4, at this, the administrators and the satraps tried to find grounds to charge against Daniel in his conduct of governmental affairs. But they were unable to do so. So they could find no corruption in him because he was trustworthy. Neither corrupt nor negligent. Verse 5, finally, these men said, we will never find any basis to charge against Daniel. We're not going to be able to stop him from his ascension unless it has something to do with the law of God. Now, we know he has a strong relationship with God. So if we can find something there, we can trick him up, trip him up and trap him. So the administrators in verse 6 and the satraps went as a group to the king and said, may the king Darius live forever. It started with the flattery. The royal administrators, prefects, satraps, advisors, and governors have all agreed that you're such a magnanimous king. You're so incredible. You're so powerful. You're so phenomenal. You should have an edict or issue a law or enforce a decree that anyone who prays to any god or any human besides you for the next 30 days uh, that they they will be found guilty and thrown into the lion's den now your majesty please issue this decree and put it in writing because we know secretly that if you put it in writing it cannot be altered and this is in accordance with the laws of Medes and Persians which cannot be repealed and so Weak-minded King Darius, caught up and puffed up in pride, built up by some treacherous people, did exactly what they wanted him to do. He put the decree in writing. Now in Daniel verse 10, learned that the decree had been published. He went home to his upstairs room where the windows were open towards Jerusalem and three times a day he got down on his knees and he prayed giving thanks to God just as he had done before go to verse 19 
At the first light of dawn, the king got up, hurried down to the lion's den, which Daniel had been thrown in. And when he came near the den, he called to Daniel in an anguished voice, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, has he been able to rescue you from the lions? Daniel answered in verse 21, may the king live forever, my God. I got to hang my hat right there for a few seconds. My God sent his angel and he shut the mouth of the lions. They hurt me not because I was found innocent in his sight, nor have I done wrong before you, your majesty. Verse 23, the king was overjoyed and he gave the orders to lift Daniel out of the den. And when Daniel was lifted out of the den, no wound was found on him because he trusted in his God. When Daniel was lifted out of the den, no wound was found on him because he trusted in his God. God, it's a preaching moment. Get the glory in Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated on your way down. I need you to testify to somebody beside you and say, he did that. As I look back over my life and think things over, y'all remember that song? And think things over, I can truly say that I've been blessed. I have. I'm going to take it a step further instead of saying I have a testimony. I just want you to declare I am the testimony. I am the way out of no way. I am the one that God favored and blessed beyond measure because I didn't deserve it, but he gave it to me anyhow. I am the testimony. I never should have, I never would have, I never could have made it, but by the grace of God, I am still here. I am the testimony. All month long, my prayer is that you will position your posture, your, your mind, your hearts to, to have a list. You need a list this month. Don't wait till Thanksgiving month. Don't wait till Thanksgiving day. Don't wait till November. I don't need you to wait till December, but I need you to start right now. This entire month should be a month of you attributing to God what belongs to him, giving him the honor that is due unto his name. I want you to have a list of things that God has already done, and I need you to rehearse. I need you to punctuate it with your power. I need you to literally practice what God has done in your mind, in your heart, and in your hearing so that you can continually and perpetually be in a posture of praise and thanksgiving. There's another text that I won't deal with on today where 10 lepers were healed and only one of them had the audacity to turn around and tell the Lord, thank you. My question is, which one are you? Are you one of the nine or are you one of the ten that will spend this month not waiting till Thanksgiving because this is a month every day should be a day of thanks living. Every single day you should be grateful that you got breath you in your body, activity in your limbs, that you woke up in your right mind, that you got a roof over your head, clothes on your back, that you literally are not cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, that you got, I, I wish I had somebody that would be honest with yourself, that it was the Lord that put clothes on your back, that he got you here today, that even if you had to borrow a ride, he gave you somebody that you could call and that you could ask to even get here today, that you got a job to go to, oh, don't play with me now, that you got sustenance that he's given you sustaining power even through path powerful situations God has been more powerful than your situation and he's shown himself mighty and kept every promise that he has made to you I'm trying to help you with your list I want you to be thankful this month that God has given you salvation that he didn't let you die in your sin that the penalty of your sin should be death and if you died for every sin that you committed in thought word and deed none of us would be sitting here right now but you are the thank God for his grace. You need to thank him for his mercy. You need to thank him for his unconditional love. He loved your nappy head when you didn't even, when you, you didn't have the capacity to be lovable. You ought to thank him for grace and for mercy that he gave you some stuff you didn't deserve, but he didn't give you what you really did deserve. You need to thank him for divine protection, that he put some things around you because they tried to take you out of here. You don't even realize it. They weren't trying to hurt your feelings. They were trying to end your career. 
but God put protection around you you gotta thank him for provision that he saw the vision and he provided everything that you needed to get to where you are you better quit acting like you brand new up in here if it had not been for his divine provision you ought to thank him for his healing you know it wasn't supposed to hurt like that it was supposed to cause you to die and to leave here but you walked out of the hospital you didn't die in the hospital that they didn't take you out of here I saw millions die with COVID but look at you with breath in your body look at you that you got up with activity look at you with blood in your vein look at you with a heart beating in your chest look at you with the capacity to think you got a thing who got a list in here Yes, God, you got to thank him for guidance that he didn't let you go where you were trying to go, that he didn't let you see who you were trying to see, that he didn't let you be with who he was trying, you were trying to be with, that he gave you peace, that when the storm started raging, you kicked your heels up, crossed your legs and said, I'll wait it out because my God is in charge of the storm. I'm trying to help you with your list. You need to thank him for forgiveness. I know you act like you super saved right now. I know, oh, I know you fire baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost but let's be clear it ain't always been like this and I am not the perfect vessel even right now but God gave me both grace and mercy and he promised that if I repent he would forgive me somebody ought to thank him for forgiveness and is there anybody here that's got the gift of the Holy Ghost on your list you thank God that he sent a comforter that wipes the tears from your eyes that encourages you when nobody else will that pushes you when you can't push your is there anybody that's got enough joy that it don't matter what's happening on the outside what you got on the inside makes you stronger than what you can see is there anybody in here with a list y'all gotta help me out one more time he did that Slap somebody into their weave shake just a little bit and say, he did that. You must be scared of them. Their wig didn't move. He did that. Ooh, give me a minute. I'm trying to keep it together because I got too far to go. But when I think of his goodness and all that he has done for me, you can't tell it let me tell it what the Lord has done for me uh, he did that you, you, when you look at it you got, you got to tear your face up he let's put a little stank on your face that's he mm. he did that God has been incredibly good. And as good as he has been, it is nothing in comparison to how good he is about to be. Who you better take 30 seconds and praise him on the level of your expectation. Don't worry about your neighbor. They ain't expecting much. That's why they ain't praising much. But if you believe that God is able to do over, above, and beyond, beyond, in any time, any place, any cause, until it's excessive, don't wait on them. Give them an excessive praise in advance. Yes, God! Yes, God. Yes, God. Woo! Bless his name. Sit down if you can. Sit down if you can. My God, my God. Oh, I already see you in it. Don't worry about it. I get it. No, no, I get it. They don't get it. I get it. I see your name on it. I see you with keys to it. I see you walking into it. I see you celebrating that it's done. I see you with your healing. I See you. Don't worry about them. I see you in the future and you look better than you look right now. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Come on, sit down. Please sit down. Sit down. Here's the challenge. Here's the reality, I should say. I, I, 
I am confident of this. That the fact that God has been this good to you already. The fact that you made it through danger seen and some stuff that you didn't even know was trying to take you out of here. Anybody else been through enough that you look back and realize it didn't mean to hurt you, but it was trying to kill you? That the enemy lobbed a grenade in your house and tried to blow up your whole family, tried to destroy your children? I can deduce based on the fact that you are still here that it has not been easy. Just based on the reality and the natural inclination and implications of the, of the text of the word uh, that in this life you're going to have some tribulation. You made it through a lot of stuff, but let's be real. It wasn't easy. Yeah, every day wasn't sunshine. Every day wasn't singing songs of, uh, of sweet Zion. Every day wasn't uh, rainbows and, and, and blue skies. Every day wasn't butterflies and, and hummingbirds, but you had some, some vultures, some hawks. You, you, you had some dark days and some damp days. You had some tough times and you had some tall territory. You had some moments where you almost lost everything, including your mind. If you ain't lived long enough to figure it out, just keep living. The enemy will hit you so hard. He will try to distract and destroy you so much that you won't know whether you're going or coming. Anybody else ever been in a place where you, you wanted to pray, but you didn't even know how to pray? You didn't even have strength enough to know what to pray for. And all you could say is just pray for me because I don't even know how to pray right now. So, so you've, you've got to know that it has not. And I know and I'm confident just looking at the, the victory that you are, the, the miracle that you have, that he has manifested in you. I, I, I'm confident that it has not been easy. And I, I borrowed this from uh, Pastor Tolan Morgan, but, and I think it's an exceptional statement. It, it, it declares very clearly for our understanding. It should become the thesis of your heart. It should be literally become uh, the, the, the resonance of your mind. You should, you should mandate this as a truth in yourself immediately. Because I think anything less than that is going to create a, a cynical Christian. In other words, you will have an expectation that is unrealistic and then when you don't, when, the, when life doesn't meet that expectation, you will move and operate in cynicism instead of faith. So let me give you this truth. Christianity, walking as a believer, walking as someone who has a, an intense relationship and heart for God, Christianity is a battleground, not a playground. Oh, let that sit in for a second. Let that just marinate in your spirit for a few seconds. Because some of you have it twisted. You think that we just woke up like this. But all's my life has had to fight. And God has kept me, but it's not because I have had no fights. I've had some battles, I've had some betrayals, I've had some heartbreaks, I've had some heartaches. You can't serve in the kingdom's cause and not have some haters. I don't know, I guess I'm the only one here today. I've had some moments where it was so miserable that I wanted to quit. I've had some days where I said, this is it. I've had, some, I've had some mornings when I didn't know if I was going or coming, whether I wanted to get out of the bed, whether I wanted to stay in. I've had some attacks. But I had to recognize and realize that God never promised me it was going to be easy. He simply promised me that I was going to walk away with the victory. He didn't tell me that the weapons wouldn't be formed. He just said they wouldn't prosper when they were formed against me. He didn't tell me that I wouldn't have heavy weight on me. He just promised me that greater is he that's going to be in me than anything that the world puts on me. Are y'all with me? And so in the text, you see the picture of Daniel. 
Daniel, who was a slave boy that was captured during the Babylonian Empire takeover, and he was put into the service of the king along with Mishael, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, as you would know them, Azariah. Uh, he was put into the service of the king. And Daniel had to deal with the incredible weight, watch this, not of, 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 of enslavement, not of the pressure of being a servant, not from being under the king's uh, table and under the king's uh, law or rule, but Daniel had to deal with the incredible heavy weight of God's favor. Here's what you don't understand. Favor is heavy. Oh, y'all don't see it. By the end of this, I pray you do. But favor comes with incredible weight because it draws incredible fire. Whenever the favor of God is on you, you can expect there to be a tax on you as well. Whenever the favor of God is so prevalent and strong that everybody starts taking note of it, know that, you, that, that your friends are not the only ones that take note of it, but the enemy takes note of it also. And so Daniel had incredible favor to the extent that there were 120 satraps or, or leaders or governors in the, in the provincial uh, leadership of the kingdom. There were 120. There were three people who were placed over the 120 and Daniel was one of the three that was over the 120 government officials that were leading the whole kingdom. And, and being one of the three, he was elevated. Uh, the king had decided, I'm going to make Daniel over even the three. So Daniel will be over the three. He'll be over the 120 and I'll make him second in charge or I'll put him in charge of governing the whole kingdom. And there were reasons for Daniel's trouble. And, and when I looked at the text and we began to do our discovery and our study, I figured out that some of these reasons are so parallel to our circumstances that I could not leave this preaching moment without sharing with you why Daniel had to deal with so much trouble. Daniel dealt with so much trouble that he ended up in a lion's den. And Daniel had so much trouble that he ended up being lied on and hated on. And so why was Daniel dealing with so much trouble? Here's the first reason. Because Daniel was first of all chosen by the king. Okay. I know that just went over your head. It didn't feel like it was much, but I promise you it's going to be good when, before we get done. Daniel was chosen by the king. In other words, it had nothing to do with his personal ability. It wasn't his pedigree because he came from being a slave. He, it wasn't a vote. It wasn't a by proxy. He simply had the favor of the king and the king chose him. He was put over the affairs in Babylon, not because of what he brought to the table, but God had put something special on Daniel that caused the king to take note of Daniel and the king simply chose Daniel. Oh, y'all missing it. Please don't make me work this hard at 10 o'clock. 7.30, they gathered a little faster than you and I know y'all smarter than them. He was able to get to this place, not because of anything he brought to the table, but he was chosen. In other words, he didn't ask for it. And the likelihood is he probably didn't even want it, but he was chosen. They attacked him. They, the enemy raised up. The satraps came against him. The other governors started coming against him. Not because of anything that he had done, but just because he was chosen. Oh, you don't see it. Oh, y'all don't see it. Come on, lean in in the back. No child left behind. I got you. The only reason that the enemy has raised his head against you, that he is lifting a hand to attack you, that he is coming against you, is because the king has chosen you. You didn't work for it, you ain't qualified for it, you didn't ask for it, can I just be real and talk about myself? I didn't ask to be a pastor, I didn't want to be a pastor, there's no way that I would have chosen to be a pastor, but the king looked over the banisters of heaven, looked with 
in me and saw more for me than I could see for myself and it's not about me he just chose me it was because the king chose me and he gave me unmerited favor I didn't deserve it I couldn't have earned it I didn't have to lie for it I didn't have to posture for it I didn't have to play myself for it I didn't have to lose myself for it I didn't have to give up myself for it I simply was obedient and the Lord looked upon me and said it's you you're going to see increase you're going to see favor you're going to see elevation you're going to see promotion and they're hating on you not because of you they're hating on you because the king chose you you asking the question I don't understand why they coming at me like this I didn't even do anything the only thing I've ever done is do what I'm supposed to do and I can't help what the Lord has done for me I didn't ask for this this favor that he put on my life it ain't got nothing to do with me he chose me slap somebody high five and say I'm chosen some of your greatest attacks are going to come and it ain't got nothing to do with you. You can't figure out why they're hating on you the way they're hating on you. Why they're coming at your life. Why they're trying to take your job. Why they're trying to bring you down. Why they're talking to the boss about you. It's because you're chosen. The king chose you. Here's the thing. You thought that when he chose you to walk in favor that it wasn't going to come with the enemy's fire. Here's the problem. He says, if you're going to reign with me, you're going to have to learn how to suffer with me. Everybody want to be chosen until they realize how much it costs. Push somebody and say, pay up. You want to be famous, it comes with fire. You want to be a celebrity, it comes with, it comes with all kind of attacks. You want to have the weight of God's grace and his favor on your life. You want to be elevated, you want to see increase, you want to go to the next level, you want to be promoted, be careful what you ask for. Because when you get promoted, the enemy, listen, listen, the higher you go, the higher his attacks come in your life. He said, if you're going to reign with me, you got to learn how to suffer with me. You got, you, you, your, your cross represents salvation, but it also represents suffering. He said, take up your cross and follow me daily. And some of the things that people are coming against you on, it ain't got nothing to do with you. That's why you can't understand it. You're like, I don't even know her. Am, am I the only one that's been in those situations? Where you, it's like, I don't even know them. Why do they have my name in your mouth? You, you, you know, that, that, you, that, that's when you stop being so proper in suburban. You, you don't say mouth. You say mouth with an F. Keep my name. They all under your social media making comment. Who? That ain't really what y'all say, but I'm going to leave it right there. Who the heaven are you? And you can't understand why. I'm trying to tell you, it's because the king chose you. They tapped you for a promotion and you didn't do nothing to apply for it. The king chose you. So part of his problem was that he was chosen. But the reason he was chosen by the king was because he was commended for his excellent spirit. In other words, he had the kind of character that stood head and shoulders above everybody else in service. His character superseded those who were serving among him. And his attitude attached to his character stood above everybody else's. In other words, while everyone else was complaining about their assignment, he was smiling in the assignment and he was doing it with the greatest of joy. And you got to know, it's hard. Remember, he didn't sign up and volunteer. He was taken captive. It is hard to have good character while you're in captivity. 
It's hard when you are when you are captive to a circumstance. It is hard for you to maintain good character. Y'all don't believe me. Just have a bad day and let them let somebody say good morning at the wrong time. They wondering what's wrong with you. Why are you being so rude and so harsh to me? I didn't do nothing to you. It's because your character has slipped because you are in captivity. This man was so incredibly infatuated with God that he had the strength of God to remain in good character while he was still in captivity. Your, your situation ought not make you bitter, but it has to make you better. And here's the question. Are you still smiling while you're in the midst of your misery? Are you still praising while you're still in the middle of your pain? Are you still thanking God when you don't know how you're going to get through this situation? Are you still showing up and serving God even when it's uncomfortable and unpopular? Are you still giving God glory even when you don't see the end of your story? Are you still blessing God at all times and letting his praises continually be in your mouth? My question to you brothers and sisters is are you guilty of having good character even when you're in captivity? Daniel received attack because he was the one that was smiling when nobody wanted to be bothered with him. Good morning. What's so good about it? He maintained good character even in captivity. So he was commended for his character. But then this is when the real problem started. This is when, the, this is when everything hit the fan. This is when the, 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 the whole ship began to turn. He was chosen by the king, which drew fire from the enemy. He was commended for maintaining good character. But really, his problems really, really elevated when he was commissioned above his colleagues. If you want to know who people really are around you, you become elevated before they do. And you're going to see who they really are. Oh, I'm about to preach right here. Over all the other men, all the other boys, all the other people who were in the service of the king, the king chose Daniel. And your elevation will always draw out your enemies. When we all broke. But when you come into your season of favor. And you don't feel like they feel. You know how they feel. Like you owe them something because y'all was broke together and their bad character wouldn't allow them to be elevated but you got elevated and now you acting funny because you don't want to tell take care of them the way they think you need to take care of them Ooh, I'm preaching better than y'all saying that once preach boy listen they, they will always show you how they really feel when you get promoted before they do. If they can't celebrate you in your season of favor, then that is God revealing that they were never your friends in the first place. Oh, I'm going to help you right here. And some of them, watch this, some of them have the same blood that you got. But God will use your elevation to reveal where the snakes are in your life. Yes, God. God will show you who is behind you, who is around you, who is in front of you by elevating you above them so you can see who they really are. It's good as long as we all on the same level. 
But the moment you come into a season of favor, it's a problem for me. I don't understand why you acting so funny. Now you acting like you brand new. I am. I got a new walk. I got a new talk. I got a new perspective. I got a new vantage point. I ain't hanging out in low places no more. My name, he said he gonna make my name great. And I ain't gonna let you pull it down by me doing what we used to do. I used to be this. I used to do this and the only people that mess with you about what you used to do and who you used to be is people with a problem with who you used to who you are about to be and where you are about to go they really have a problem with your future and they keep bringing up your past my god i'm preaching good right now to myself Give me one second while I bless God that he revealed some folks to me, that he showed me some people, that he showed me where the enemy was hiding. See, the enemy is so slick and so sneaky that he don't look like the enemy. He look like your friend. He look like your boo. He looks like your bae. He looks like the broke down. I'm going to drop it. I can't push it. God will elevate you. But don't miss it because he's going to show you who you need to see. Watch this. Daniel was elevated in the kingdom. I'm, I'm going to help you before you leave, I promise. You're going to go looking at everybody sideways. Who are you? Who sent you? And who sent you? Hey, how you doing? Good to see you. Hey, cuz, who sent you? What's up, auntie? Who sent you? <laughs> oh, what's up? I'm good to see I ain't seen you so long, but who sent you? So, they decided. The 120 satraps, the other two governors, they got together and they said, listen, we got to figure something out. So in chapter 3, you, you'll see the evidence of his good character. You'll see the confidence of why God gave the king instruction to choose him. But in verse 4, they got together and had a meeting to try to plan his demise. See, you got to know that the enemy is calling meetings about the favor that's on your life. You wondering why you being attacked. It's because the enemy sees so much promise on your life that he realizes if he can't stop you now, you're going to eventually bring more glory to his arch rival, which is God himself. They got together and said, listen, we got to stop Daniel. Ain't no way in the world Daniel can be elevated before us. And who? Who do you think you are? That, no, no, actually, let me correct that. They're not going to say who do you think you are. Because they ain't going to talk to you. They're going to go behind your back. And they're going to talk about you. And so they're going to ask the question, who does he or who does she think they are? I, I can see them now convening saying we got to stop him. There ain't no way in the world we can let this happen. How is Daniel, Daniel a slave, Daniel taken into servitude, Daniel who is a Jew going to reign over us, the Gentiles? How in the world can we possibly let this happen? The one who is taken captive is now going to be in charge of the whole kingdom? Let me help you out because y'all missing it. Lean in. What he's really saying, what they're really saying is, how in the world are we going to let one of them? Be second in charge of the unite, I mean of the kingdom. Y'all will get it tomorrow. Are we going to let this Jew 
reign over we the Gentiles. In other words, how are we going to let this minority? Have robe, have rule and reign over our whole kingdom. But what you don't understand is that God has a system that is completely opposite to the system of man. In other words, he says, the first shall be last. And when I get done, the last shall be first. He has a strategic way of reaching to the bottom of nowhere and pulling out of obscurity those vessels who are yielded for his glory and he will position them in high places in Christ Jesus. It's not just principalities that are going to be set up in high places, but God says I have made you to be seated in high places in Christ Jesus, which means that God has a way of looking for the least, the last, the lost, the left out. He said these are they that I'm going to elevate as a matter of fact some of y'all should have shouted right there you should have threw your wig off you should have lost your mind right there because if it hadn't been for God going to the uttermost and the guttermost and picking you up out of obscurity and elevating you in spite of yourself and not looking at your pedigree not looking at your degrees not looking at the qualifications of man but God qualified you in heavenly places and they could not stop you they could not block you they could couldn't keep you out they couldn't push you out they couldn't pull you out they couldn't snatch you out somebody ought to tell God thank you <laughs> tells the neighbor I started from the bottom <laughs> you can go on and finish it <laughs> now I'm here I want to tell you about the enemy that you fight though the enemy sat down and tried to figure out every way that he could to disqualify him. He said, well, let's try wine. It ain't going to work because in Daniel 2, he said, I'm not going to eat from the king's table. I won't defile my temple. I need a Daniel diet. He said, the wine ain't going to work. Let's try women. Daniel's like, no, I'm committed. I'm sold out. I'm in it to win it. They tried everything that they could. Let's try this. Let's try that. Finally, they came to a conclusion. They said, hey, we can't find nothing on this dude. There's nothing. He's so, he's so in love with God. He's so infatuated with his relationship. With God. We can't find nothing on him. So the enemy says, all right, cool. We're going to have to make something up. And you wonder why. They lying on you behind your back. Because when he can't find anything to disqualify you, to try to destroy you and derail your destiny, they will make something up. So when the enemy couldn't find a situation, they created one. They said, this meeting is called to order. We can't find anything in the natural. Can't find anything to tempt him. We can't find anything that's going to derail him. We can't find anything to pull him out of his destiny the only way we're going to be able to get to Daniel is that we have to do something that deals with the law of his God you know I, I thought about this for a minute and I had to say to myself I said serving every single time we know the only way we're going to be able to bring them down is we got to destroy their ability to worship because if they, if they get an opportunity to worship they're going to worship God in spirit and in truth at any time any place, anywhere, any time in front of anybody we know that the only way we're going to be able to stop them is we got to stop them in the area of their faithfulness and their commitment and their obedience and their loyalty to God because we know that they are so sold out that there's no other way that we can this I wonder how many of you that would be the testimony that when the enemy calls a meeting about you whether or not he scratches his head and says I can't find no way to pull him off course so we're going to have to hit him in the area in their prayer life we're going to have to hit him in their praise we're going to have to hit them in the area of their relationship with God see this is what the enemy doesn't know is that when I hold on to God God holds on to me when I got a relationship with God God keeps his relationship with me when I trust God God 
God puts his confidence in me. When I reach for God, God reaches back for me. I will let nothing separate me from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Though you slay me, yet will I trust him. I will bless the Lord and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. I got to pray without ceasing. So they went to the king. Let me rush through this. They went to the king. They said, oh, King Darius, live forever. You are so great, so mighty, so magnificent, so incredible. You are the greatest king of all time. This is what we think you should do. You got to be careful when people start with all the flattery. It's typically a setup for a setback. This is what we think you should do. We think you should issue a law. Put it in writing. Because you know in Persian and Midian law, once you write it king, it can't be taken back. So we think that you should put a law in place that for the next 30 days, nobody can pray to any human or any God or anything except you. You, 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 need, to, you need to put a, 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 you put a law in place that goes against the laws of God. And the king in his weak-minded foolishness says, you know, that's a good idea. Say amen to me. Praise me. Worship me. Pray to me. And he writes the decree and puts it in place, which now it becomes law that cannot be rescinded. It cannot be taken back. He has written it out. And you can imagine that they walked away from him saying, yeah, we got Daniel now. How many of your enemies have walked away from you saying, yeah, we got them now. We got them now. There ain't no way in the world they're going to be able to get. Because we know, we know this is going to trip Daniel up. The Bible says that Daniel, having been informed of the new law, knowing what the law was and what the consequence was. Daniel, let me tell you what Daniel is. Daniel is a G for real. Daniel says, I got the text message. I saw the email come through. I saw it on the news. Y'all done put a law in place. It's trying to pull me away from God. And you want me to pray to this person who is an idol instead of praying to the one true God. Daniel said, all right, I'll be back. Daniel went home. Opened the window so you can see me because Daniel realized he had stalkers some of y'all don't even know it yet but you got stalkers you got people watching your page trying to see what you about to do and trying to see how your relationship with God is going to play out at the end Daniel had stalkers he opens the window and the Bible says he got on his knees turned his face towards Jerusalem and not once not twice but three times a day he said I'm still going to pray just like I did before you issued the edict let me tell you Daniel was committed to his prayer life Daniel made a decision this is why Daniel was elevated because God says I can trust him he's going to pray when it's comfortable he's going to pray when it's uncomfortable he's going to pray when it's safe he's going to pray when it's dangerous he's going to pray in the good times and he's going to pray in the bad times I love this child because he talks to me and because he talks to me I'm obligated to answer him I'm going to elevate him I'm going to promote him I'm going to favor him because he made his mind up that he'll let nothing separate him 
come from his love of me and the fact that Daniel opened the window let everybody know you can look you can laugh you can talk you can cry you can criticize you can scorn you can mock but as for me and my house I'm still gonna serve him I'm still gonna pray I'm gonna pray anyhow I lost my job I'm gonna pray anyhow I lost my way I'm gonna pray anyhow my health has started failing I'm gonna pray anyhow almost lost some relationships but I'm gonna pray anyhow and listen when he started praying the Bible doesn't say that he just prayed but when you start talking to God and God starts talking back to you you start thinking about what he's done in your life and his prayer turned into praise the moment he started talking to God God started downloading into him and he had a case of what my grandmama called the can't help us I can't help but to thank him I can't help but to lift you I can't help but to bless you I can't help but to praise you I can't help but to honor you I can't help but to give you glory when I f- think of your goodness I almost lost it but the one thing I refuse to lose is I ain't gonna lose my relationship with God I almost lost everything but I ain't gonna lose my relationship with God I gotta be like Daniel I'm like a tree that's planted by the water and I made up my mind I shall not be moved you can do all that you want to do you can look at my page you can do all that you think you need to do but when you get done I'm still gonna be the one that's shouting I'm still gonna be the one that's praising I'm still gonna be the one that's worshiping I'll still be the one that's praying you'll find me on my face before the altar saying Lord have mercy on me Lord continue to get the glory where my real praisers I need about 10 seconds of I will bless the Lord at all times kind of praise I need some people to open your mouth and give God the greatest I won't let go until it blesses me. So, stalkers are at the window. They say, oh, we got him now. They ran back to the king. And you got to know that when they go tell it, it ain't going to be like it was. They said, he don't even care what you say. Daniel ain't said nothing about not caring about the king's edict. He simply cares about God's will more than he does man's word. But when they tell it, they got to put some hot sauce on it. Look, king, he's still praying and he ain't praying to you. He don't care what you have to say. Now, the king is between a rock and a hard place because he, he has grown fond of Daniel. He has a heart towards Daniel. But he also put a law in place. They tricked me. They got me. But it's too late now. Because now he has to do what has been commanded. He knows now he's got to subject Daniel, his chosen vessel. The person who was chosen now has to face The consequences of disobeying man's law in the face of honoring God. I need y'all to hear me. Because you are chosen. We are at a time where you're going to have to make a decision. Whether you are willing or not to face the consequence of disobeying man's law in the face of injustice, unrighteousness to honor God's law. Oh, we are there. Oh, we are there. It's bigger than an election. It's a turning point in the earth. It is God shifting and sifting. He wants to know who are the wheat and who are the tear. In other words, who are the weeds and who are the good harvest? And he's calling us into a valley of decision where we're going to have to decide, will you still praise me? 
or will you do what is convenient and what is popular and what is put in place by man? Will you honor my covenant or will you honor the laws of the land? We are there. Daniel didn't waver, didn't move, didn't blink, didn't think. He simply bowed down and said, God, for you I live. And you're sovereign and you all still die. So they grabbed him and they threw him in the lion's den. Then they put a rock over, over the mouth of the den. And he had to make it official. He sealed it with his ring. He put the signet of the government on there, which meant that nobody could open this except he broke the seal. Anyone who did would be committing treason and would suffer the same punishment and same penalty. So he put a rock over it, sealed it, and then he went back to the palace. The problem is that while he was in the palace, because he knew he had condemned an innocent man, but his hands were tied and he had no choice. The Bible says that he couldn't eat and he couldn't sleep. He's up pacing the floor all night long for what he know he did to an innocent person. He could find no rest. And all night long, he's worried about Daniel being in this den. But the, the counter to that is that the king was up. But Daniel, who was in the den, was asleep. The king was restless, but Daniel, who is in the lion's den, was resting because Daniel had a relationship with God. And when you have a real relationship with God, it doesn't matter where the enemy puts you or what he throws at you, you will still have sweet rest. Your haters are up all night looking at your page, trolling your feed, trying to figure out what they can figure out, and you at home unbothered and sleep. Because you got a relationship with God. The next morning, the king gets up. He says, I don't need breakfast. I don't want anything. I got to hurry and get down here and check on my boy, Daniel. They move the stone. The Bible says apprehensively, in a very wearied voice, he says, uh, Daniel, da Daniel, Daniel. I'm sure he was expecting to see a body that was ripped to shreds, bloody limbs laying around, clothes disheveled and ripped apart. Daniel uh, uh, has, uh, Daniel has your, was your, was your God who you, who you serve continually, was he able Daniel, was he, was he able? Daniel, was your God able? Woo. Daniel, I just want to know, was your God able? was your God able when you lost your loved ones was your God able when you lost your job was your God able when you lost your marriage was your God able Was he able to save you from the mouths of the lions? Daniel, 
Samuel is actually about 90 years old at this time. In this feeble voice, I can see him shuffling to the light. Oh, King Darius, live forever because my God, yes God, yes God, my God, my God, my God is more than able, my God is greater than the lions, my God is greater than depression, my My God, my, 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 my God, my Savior, my Redeemer, my Kingsman, my Shield, my God, my Four God, my Real God, my God is able. Hey!